pranam and a good morning to everybody here. We'll wait for people to join us and then we'll start the today's session. In 2020, we have completed 60 years of our existence. Um, I am Sri Samal Sharma. I am the coordinator of Yogi Treatments, uh, and I'm the director of Fitness Forever Studio um, in Lucknow. Both the institutes are based on the principles of yoga. Yoga treatment. We essentially do a treatment of patients who need to be cured of different illnesses, and we do therapy-based yoga for them. We try to cure a lot of illnesses which they have through yoga, alternative medicine, acupressure, meditation, but primarily through the art and science of yoga. Um, in the Fitness Forever Yoga Terminal Studio, we try to achieve various fitness goals but without machines. So the principle is that we do not use any machines. We have cardio, other modern forms of yoga, traditional yoga, detox therapies, etc., which we use to make you, help you reach your fitness goals without taking help of any artificial supplements or machineries. This module which you are currently uh, seeing in the live stream is Be at Home, Do Yoga, Live Sessions with Me. All our students and members had requested us to start uh, a series due to the current uh, public health crisis that we are going through and because of the total lockdown uh, now and the partial lockdown before our movements are restricted all our studios yoga ashram everything is shut down uh, in our own safety for our own uh, self um, which is good um, novel covid 19 is a pandemic now that means it affects across the borders across the globe is affecting a lot of people and uh, it's now a public health crisis um, which is affecting a lot of people and the health of the people of course yoga adds a protective layer to our immunity that's why the modules of the classes are scheduled in such way that uh, thrice a week we will work on boosting building and strengthening your immunity and towards the end of the week, last two days of the week, on every Thursdays and Fridays, we will work on the mental health. Because when there's a lockdown and you have to remain behind four closed walls, then it's very difficult for a lot of people to face the uh, mental turmoil, anxiety and frustration. So to combat that, there's an essential need for people to be able to look after their mental health along with their physical health, right? So alone mental health will not do much good to people. Uh, yoga is the only science which is a holistic science, right? When I say holistic science, I mean it works on all the three planes of our existence. The physical existence, the mental existence, and the spiritual existence. So at three different levels of spirituality, mental health and physical health, yoga has an effect on each of them. Uh, yesterday we talked about pranayama, when we said prana is your breath, and prana also means life. So if you are alive, if there's a life energy, if you're able to talk, do activities, means you have breath. And the day the breath leaves our body, that's the day when the chapter comes to a closure. And that's the day when we no more seem to be alive anymore, right? So breath is really, really an essential part of our existence, whether we call it the Atma, we call it the life energy, or we call it the breath. However we define it, but we can't deny it, that it is a part of our existence, and the very fact that we're alive is because of this breath, which is entering and exiting our body at every second, every millisecond, and is, is a source of life 
in our bodies. It's a source of energy in our bodies. All right. So uh, breath is very essential. So breath, life energy, or the atma, however we define it, being on the spectrum of being spiritual to being an atheist, and there's a huge spectrum between that. You may choose any of them based on uh, your individual belief, uh, but we need to know that. Uh, having said that. Uh, what is the purpose of life energy? The life energy which is within you, through the medium of yoga, yoga means union, unite, un unity of two things, uniting two elements. What are the two things that we are trying to unite? So when we say there is something called as a life energy, we also realize there is something called as a cosmic energy. The cosmic energy or for those of us who are spiritual and have belief in religion, we say Paramatma. So there's an Atma and there's a Paramatma. So there's a life energy and there's a cosmic energy. There's an individual self and there's a cosmic self. So you and your individual self is connected with the cosmic self. The individual self and cosmic self are connected. So yoga is basically the connection, the union, the uniting of the life energy with the cosmic energy, what in common, common words we say, union of Atma and Paramatma, Atma is soul, right? So connection of that with the cosmic energy of the soul is yoga, that's the aim of yoga, that's the goal of yoga. These physical forms of yoga are also done to calm your mind, to ease down your mind, right? So that you are uh, calm, and you are peaceful, and you are happy, and you are healthy, and you are strong. So there are two health crises apart from end COVID-19 crisis that we are all facing today. And one is how to boost your immunity so that you have a very, very strong immunity. Right? At this point of time, as I said yesterday, even a normal cold, cough, asthma, bronchitis can be troublesome, can put you in a higher risk zone. So if you have strengthened your immunity, if you have built a very strong immunity, it's going to help you. Is going to help you, is going to prevent you. It's like a precaution. It's another layer of prevention. It's another layer of coverage. Coverage is a layer of protection that you put around your body. And that's immunity. So we need to strengthen our pulmonary system, respiratory system, and boost and strengthen our immunity so that we can prevent ourselves from as many harmful effects as possible. All right? Second part is mental health, which we'll discuss much in detail from tomorrow. Fridays and Saturdays class we'll focus on mental health, right? So should we begin the today's class? If you see in the comments of uh, yesterday, yesterday's video and comments uh, are available on your Facebook page, um, there are there is a list of yoga program of day one and day two which I've shared with you both in Hindi script and in English script, so you can follow that. The English script and the Hindi script. You can follow that with you. It's there with you. Yes, so you can use it as a reference while we go through the entire module today. Um, we have a very, very similar module for day two as well. Uh, there are a couple of exercises which we have added in the today's class. Uh, assuming that people who joined us yesterday already have some information about what we did yesterday. I'll also go through the basics right from the beginning. Do not worry about that. There'll be a set of precautions and disclaimers and recommendations which I'll be giving in each asan from time to time. Who should do it? Who should not do it? For which person is it? For which health condition you need not do it? Where is it restricted? Please listen to those restrictions and recommendations carefully and follow them uh, religiously. Uh, follow them diligently so that uh, it does not harm you in any way. Right? We have no option but to have virtual classes. I'm not even able to reach to my yoga ashram. I'm delivering the live sessions from my home here in Lucknow. Okay, so now oh, shall we begin the class today? Set of similar exercise that we did yesterday in combination, in relation to another new exercises that we'll be doing today. All right, so as I said yesterday, water is an integral part of immunity boost water and good nutritious food. A healthy diet, a sattvic diet, a balanced diet 
also includes water. Our human body is, is made of 70% of water, as you already know, but we take it for granted and do nothing about it. If our body is made 70% of the water, where will it get the water from? Where it will receive the water from? What is the source and the entry of water in our body? We have to drink water. A healthy, normal young person should drink at least three to three and a half liters of water daily. If your, if your water quantities are restricted by your doctor for any particular illness or disease, then please do follow that and have as prescribed. But otherwise, for everybody who is healthy, you need to drink at least three to three and a half liters of water daily. Throughout the day, spread your day, have a glass by glass slowly, and every, uh, every hour, every hour and a half, according to your needs, please drink a lot of water. So before we begin the yoga session, we'll have at least one glass of lukewarm water. If you want, you can have about two glasses of lukewarm water, but at least one glass of lukewarm water is must. At this point of time, having cold water is, is not going to help us. It's not going to help us detox the body from within while we perform yoga. It's not going to help us um, in this public health crisis where COVID-19 virus is there spread across uh, communities nations and across the world so lukewarm water works as a detox so warm water throughout the day if you can have excellent if you can't then at least in the morning have lukewarm water to ensure that you detox to ensure that you are, uh, can protect yourself and take a precaution as much as possible so let's please have a glass of lukewarm water first then you can drink another glass of water or at least one glass a good quantity of one glass of lukewarm water is good to begin All right? so the first thing that we have we generally do to boost your immunity when you work with us at our yoga ashram closely in person and that is shat karmas shat karms are detox therapies they are internal body cleansing processes so they are water cleansing therapy hydrotherapies uh, through which we clean your bo body internally. So there, there are different techniques. There's kunjal for stomach, there's shank prakshalan for complete body detox, including your small intestine and large intestine. There is jalaneti, rabarneti, sutraneti. So neti is essentially for the nasal region. Very good to enhance your um, breathing, breathing system, to cleanse your breathing system, to, to, to detox all the toxins which might be there present in this part of your body. We can't perform shatkarms here virtually. It's very difficult to teach. It should always be learned and practiced under an able guidance of a guru and not practice on your own by seeing virtual things because if you go wrong then they may harm you or there might be a detrimental effect of them. So instead of it positively affecting you, it can affect you negatively. So now uh, moving on with the shatkarma, that's a piece of knowledge, we will perform first asan that we performed yesterday which is called the sarp asan sarp asan is a modified form of nagasan those who cannot perform nagasan which we'll which we'll perform today uh, that's a new addition to the today's course they it's a modified sarp asan is a modified version of nagasan um, it's modified due to expertise of our guru uh, at our yoga ashram over the, over the research of the last 60 years so let's begin with Sarvasana. Uh, in every asana, I'm not going to repeat, I'll do the lateral version and I'll do the front frontal screen version. You can look at both the versions and then practice for a third time. There's no hurry. Yoga is not acrobatics. Yoga is not running. Yoga is connecting with your deeper self, is focusing on your breathing and taking it slow and easy as your body allows you. So with every asana, I'll show you the lateral version, I'll show you the frontal version and then you can perform it, right? If there's any questions, comments or suggestions that you'd like to give, please don't forget to comment down. We'll get back to you and I'll reply to everybody individually. 
let's begin with sarpasan for sarpasan please lie down straight up look at my feet both the feet are joined together fingers are tucked inwards your palms will be next to your chest both the palms next to your chest your elbow will be placed up in the air like this behind put your forehead down the first posture of sarpasana is inhale and go up exhale and come down inhale and go up exhale and come down third time inhale and go up exhale and come down for the fourth time inhale and go up now try to look at your toes 2 1 2 1 front exhale and down all right so that is sarpasan you just now saw the lateral version of the sarpasan now we'll do a vertical version of the sarpasan and then you can practice it with me please remember the steps the steps of sarpasan is after we lie down Uh, on our stomach uh, you have to raise your upper part of the body but remember the navel and below navel and below will remain in touch with the ground do not raise your body above your navel only your, your body above the navel will rise i beg your pardon and the entire body below the navel will be in touch with the ground okay all right so lie down on your stomach hands by your side like this toes will be tucked in joined together elbows back forehead down inhale and go up look up to the sky exhale and go down inhale and go up exhale and down third time inhale and look up exhale and go down fourth time Inhale and go up. This time, fourth time, try to look above your shoulders and look at your toes. Three, four, five, six. Look up. Exhale and down. Relax. Please perform sarpasan. I'll wait for everybody. For sarpasan, you have to lie down, hands by your side, toes will be tucked inwards. You inhale and you look at the sky. You exhale and come down. You inhale and look up at the sky. You exhale and come down. For the fourth time, when you inhale and go up, across your shoulders, try to look at your toes from both the sides. Four to six times, equal on both the sides. Slowly exhale and put your head down. One round of sarpasan is good. If anybody has got a very critical uh, spinal cord issue, then either don't do it or do it as per your capacity. Do not raise your body hundred percent. How much ever your body allows you, do that. No over stretch is required. No over straining. No sweating is required. Yoga works internally, so do not worry about that. All right. Now then, we'll move to our second uh, posture. Again, lying down. After sarpasan, we'll do nagasan, the lateral version. your feet together legs will be either outwards if you have a issue with your lower back or you can also put it like this better is put it out your hands will rest on the floor even the elbows will rest on the floor and you have to look up inhale and go up hold the posture 1 2 Five. Exhale and down. All right. So that is Nagasan. Now I'll show you the frontal view of Nagasan. Hands by your side. You lie down on your stomach. Legs will be flat behind. Hands will be flat down. Elbows will touch the floor. Forehead down. 
Inhale and go up. Exhale and come down. One round of Sarvasana and one round of Nanas. You don't need to do the exercises multiple times. Asanas are the restricted numbers and they are performed according to that. Sarpasana and Nagasana should be just done once and that's good enough. You don't need to do it multiple number of times. Okay. After performing Sarpasana and performing Nagasana, now we will go and perform a breathing technique. As I said in the starting of the class, breath is prana, breath is life, breath is essential to our existence. And if through the breath we work on the pulmonary system, we work on the respiratory system, we work on the respiratory organs, then you expand the capacity of them, you strengthen your lungs, you strengthen your nasal region, you strengthen your throat, everything that's included in oxygenation of your body. So let's start with our first breathing technique, Shwas Prashwas. Shwas is inhalation, Prashwas is exhalation. The Shwas Prashwas is a four-way process of inhalation and exhalation done rhythmically to enhance the flow of breath, the flow of oxygen and the flow of breath into different parts of your body, different parts of the respiratory system. Please stand up. shadow falls according to your height and inhale and exhale three times. Step four is put your chin down, look at your toes and inhale and exhale three times. Right now we are doing it three times with practice and gradual practice. Practice makes a man perfect. So with practice you can increase the numbers to three to five to ten. Ten is more than enough. You don't need more than that right now. Alright, I hope you all have practiced uh, Shwas Prashwas. Now we'll move to the second Kriya, which is Kapol. Kapol Shakti. I told you Kapol is Kapol is taken from a beak of a crow. You know, a crow, the bird crow, with a beak in front. So Kapol is boom. Alright? So just for Kapol, you have to join your palms, join the thumbs, join the fingers. chin down, hold the breath, one, two, three, look up, exhale from the mouth. So in Kapol, we inhale from the mouth, we pump up our lungs and cheeks, we close the nostrils, put our chin down, hold the breath, what we call Kumbhak. So we practice Kumbhak for five counts, then we look up in the front and exhale from the nostril. Ground rule for anybody who has got neck pain or cervical spondylitis, do not look down below. You will do kapol in the front. 
cervical spondylitis for such patients you will inhale close your nostrils join the palms i'll show you the lateral version close your nostrils right as you can see inhale from your mouth make a beak start inhaling fill your lungs and cheeks with air so we inhale from the mouth but we exhale from the nostrils all right the after kapola shakti i'll urge you all to practice kapola shakti first and then we inhale all right so kapola shakti you will inhale from your mouth like that you'll fill air in your lungs into your cheeks put your chin down look up and exhale from your nostrils those who have neck problem you'll skip the step of putting your chin down you look in the front and perform the entire kapola shakti kriya in the front all right after kapol we are going to do griva griva is your neck so we need to do something for your neck region because if you see all the swab samples are collected from your throat that means most of the viruses and bacteria is grow in this part of your body before even entering inside your main body system so we'll do something for our neck which is called griva shakti by your side the first posture of griva shakti is you have to look up and down when you go back you inhale when you go up coming down exhale in the front three times again the ground rule is same Anybody who has got a neck problem, cervical spondylitis, will not look down. So such a perform will such a person will perform Griva Shakti is going back and stopping in the front, going back and stopping in the front. All right. Now we'll do the second step of Griva Shakti, which is left and right. So then you inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. That completes three rounds. The third and the final step of Griva Shakti is clockwise and anti-clockwise movement. Anybody who has got neck pain, acute neck pain or cervical spondylitis, will not do the third step. Chin down, inhale and go back, exhale and down. Anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise. Finally, clockwise. Last round. Anti-clockwise, right? So now please perform Griva Shakti. All of those, all those of us who have joined us live, the Griva Shakti has got three postures. Posture one is up and down while going back. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Step two is left and right. Inhale on the sidewards. Exhale in the center. Inhale on the sidewards. Exhale in the center. And step three is clockwise and anti-clockwise. performing griva we are adding a new exercise which we did not do yesterday uh, but we will practice that today it's called vakshasthal vakshasthal is a excellent exercise to strengthen your pulmonary system to enlarge the capacities of your lung and make them strong and bold right so for vakshasthal we fill the air in our body through our mouth as much as you can expand your lungs forward And once the air is full in your chest, make a fist comes inside, fingers outwards. This is how your fist should be. Thumbs will be placed inside, fingers will close it. You slowly inhale from your mouth, nostrils, and fill up your chest with air. Now we'll start with roundward, clockwise rotation of your hands. Three, four. I'll perform it without speaking so that you can have a look at it. This time we do it anti-clockwise. Right? So it is round rotation. Two, three. After the three rounds, you have to punch out and exhale with force. So you inhale, fill your
your lungs with air, fill your body with air, you do clockwise rotation of your hands and then you exhale and pump it out. So we inhale, I'll show you the lateral version. We inhale from our nostrils and pump up our lungs. We start the rotation, two, three. As you punch out, you would exhale. by both the directions clockwise and anti-clockwise I'll do it once again for everybody who might have joined us later and you exhale in the front so this is a new um, Kriya that we have learned it includes breathing strengthening of your arms right from the shoulders to the tip of your fingers but essentially it does very good work on your lungs because you expand the lungs we hold the breath and while we hold the breath in the lungs, we perform this exercise so it strengthens your lungs and the capacity of the lungs enhances brilliantly. It's a brilliant exercise to boost your immunity and strengthen your immunity by providing excess of oxygen to your body. Now after Vakshasthala, we'll do Kati Shakti. Kati Shakti we had done yesterday as well. Kati is waist, so it strengthens your waist. But as you do the Kati movement, the backward and the forward movement as I'll perform now, it also strengthens your breathing system. Alright, please come together. Hold your feet together. I'll show you the lateral version first. You have to inhale and go back. Exhale and down, touch your toes. Inhale and go back. Exhale and down. Five times. Inhale and go back. Exhale and down. Now with the breathing. Five rounds. I will now demonstrate the lateral version to you. Inhale and go back. Exhale and down. Inhale and go back. Exhale and down. Inhale and go back. Exhale and down. Now with the breathing. gymnastics just turning twisting your body in all the directions with a high level of flexibility is not yoga alone connecting with yourself connecting with your body connecting with your mind that is yoga how well you perform yogic exercises also depends on how well you can receive the energy from within yourself i hope you would have practiced kati shakti by now now after kati shakti We'll do Veer Bhadrasan. Yesterday we did Veer Bhadrasan. I taught you two versions of it. One which I called the celebrity version, which is the most popular version of Veer Bhadrasan. But particularly for our focus of immunity boosting, strengthening your lungs and pulmonary system, I taught you a variation of Veer Bhadrasan, which helps you strengthen. I'll demonstrate the popular version first, and then we will do the Veer Bhadrasan according to our method and you will perform the second method. The first Veer Bhadrasana I am just performing to make a distinction and let you know what are the ways, different ways of performing Veer Bhadrasana. So you keep a gap of about one and a half, two feet. According to your capacity, a gap of one, one and a half feet between both your legs. The front leg will go in front. Bend it like this. If you have problem keeping your back leg straight, you can change the direction of your toes to support yourself literally. Front leg will go in front, but remember the knees will not cross the fingers. The knees will be in alignment with the fingers and you will put your hands like this. The leg which is in the front, that hand will be in the front. The leg which is behind, that hand will be behind in the front and you go 
slowly like this. One, two, three, four, five. And say and back. Right. Now I'll show you the lateral version. There's about one and a half foot gap in between. If you have problems keeping both the legs vertically, the back leg, you can change the direction of the leg like this. The front leg goes in the front, but only to the point that the knees don't cross your toes. This should be in alignment with the toes. The leg which is in front, the hand will be in the front. The leg which is behind, hand will be behind. And you go one, two, three, four, five. All right, so this is uh, the popular version of Virbhadrasana. Now we will do the varied version of Virbhadrasana, which essentially expands your lungs capacity, works solidly on your pulmonary system. And that is the aim of going live in these classes to benefit the masses, is to benefit all those who are in need, all those who want to learn, and all those who need to strengthen their immunity and pulmonary system so that you have a layer of protection in the time of this public health crisis. All right? So now I'll perform Virbhadrasana, the varied version. It'll be seen a gap of about one and a half, two feet between both the legs. If there's difficulty in you placing your legs vertically like that, you can change the direction of the leg like this. This will go in the front, again the knees will remain in alignment, should not cross your leg further, just in there. Look in the front, hands by your side, inhale and go back. Exhale and come down. I'll perform from the other side. Now you can start and try to practice with me. The leg will be in the front. If you have problems in keeping both the legs in the same alignment, the back leg you can change it like this. The front leg will go in the front, but should not cross your toes, it will be within your toes. Hold the hands by your side, inhale and go up. <coughs> Exhale and come down, come back. So as you pump air inside your lungs and you go back, there's a stretch on your entire thoracic region. So it strengthens your thoracic breathing, it strengthens your lung and it strengthens your pulmonary system. All right, so Virbhadrasana, both the versions. Now I urge you to practice the Virbhadrasana, the way we did it. I'll perform it again, meanwhile. A gap of one and a half feet between both the legs. If there's problem in the back leg, you can change the direction of the leg. Go forward only till your knees don't cross your legs. Inhale, go back. Exhale and down. So inhale while going backwards. Exhale while coming forward. Now we're going to add a new asana, which we did not do yesterday, but we're going to do today. It works on your entire body system, right from the tip of the toes to the Sahasra Chakra, the crown of your the topmost part is called Paarasan. Paar is a very strong, a very well-built, a very uh, well-rooted tree in India. So Paarasan, Paar ka ek peer hota hai. Iski jade jo hoti hai, bohat gehrai tak pahunchti hai, bohat hi vishal aur bohat hi dhrad, bohat hi strong raksha hota hai wo. Right? So it's a very strong tree. That's why he performed Paarasan. That, that, uh, this asana is taken from a tree. So it's the par asana. You put your feet together, hands by your side. Inhale and go up. Palms will face outside and you will raise on your toes. Look in the front, try to hold the posture. One, two, three, four, five. Exhale and come down. Right? If there is problem in balancing, once you're on your toes, you have problem in balancing. You can use the support of the nearest wall and perform Tarasana there. Right? You can use the wall and perform Tarasana with the support of a wall. So I'll perform Tarasana once again. Hands by your side. Inhale and go up. Hold the posture. One, two, three, four, five. Exhale and come down. Perform Tarasana. If you want, you can have a little bit of water.
start with the module of the standing exercise the module is there with you already in front of you please follow that the first breathing technique which we are going to do while we sit down is called gehri shwas prashwas as i said shwas is inhalation prashwas is exhalation gehri shwas prashwas is deep inhalation and deep exhalation right those of you who can sit like this cross legs you can sit if anybody has got problem in sitting cross leg you can perform all the sitting exercises while sitting on a chair so what what is now popularly known as a chair yoga so you can sit on a chair and you can perform it there all right so if you can sit in padmasan you can sit in full padmasan if you can't you can sit in ardha padmasan with the left leg on the top all right we are in padmasan both the hands will be in the gyan mudra yesterday i taught you gyan mudra is the first finger and the tip joined together right no force no exertion so no locking you don't have to interlock it hold it exert unnecessarily pressure do like this like this no just the first finger and the thumb the tips join each other and that makes it all so like this from the other hand also the finger and the thumb so both the finger and the thumb will join the tips and this is gyan mudra so whenever i say gyan mudra you know this is gyan mudra both the sides of the hand will be in gyan mudra look in front gehri shwas prashwas is deep breathing deep inhalation and deep exhalation keep on inhaling till the time you think the air has reached the tip of your toes once you think the breath the air has filled and occupied each and every part of your body slowly start exhaling so once it's occupied every part of your body slowly slowly start exhaling out always remember what distinguished gehri shwas prashwas only one factor your exhalation will be much longer than inhalation if you breathe in at the count of 2 your exhalation should be at the count of at least 4 so inhale slowly if you want you can shut down your eyes and you can try to focus between both your eyebrows here at the agya chakra between both the eyebrows at this part with your shut eyes this also like an entry level first point of meditation where we begin meditation close your eyes inhale slowly exhale please practice it for 5 times please continue doing it the gehri shwas prashwas regulates your breath helps you to control your breath it really helps you in achieving a stability of mind if you think your mind is very anxious it's very unstable it keeps on moving here and there everywhere then you need to do gehri shwas prashwas which is deep inhalation and exhalation shwas is inhalation prashwas is exhalation so deep inhalation and exhalation really helps you in toning down your mind calming the mind getting the stability of your mind so after performing the lying down exercises we did module on standing exercises and for those of us who have joined just now welcome to the live streaming now we are performing we have just now started performing with the sitting asanas first which we are doing is called gehri shwas prashwas deep breathing this is the first level of entry into meditation and the only factor that you need to know as you practice the exhalation will be longer than the inhalation if you inhale at the count of 2 slowly and steadily you exhale at the count of 4 slowly and steadily so keep on inhaling till you think the air is filled in your entire body and then slowly exhale it out i'll perform it you perform it with me hands will be gyan mudra for gyan mudra the first finger and the thumb the tips will join don't lock it don't exert pressure just the tips will join you place it here you can sit in sukhasan normal cross legs you can sit on a chair you can sit in ardha padmasan and if you can put full padmasan you can go ahead and do that as well both hands like this slowly inhale one two slowly exhale one two three four so inhale slowly exhale right 
So inhalation and exhalation ratio, exhalation will be much longer duration than your inhalation. So after you have done Gehari Shwas Prashwas, next thing which we will do is a very popular thing is called Kapalabhati. Kapalabhati you have heard about it a lot, but I want to put a disclaimer here. Everybody does not need Kapalabhati. Please do not listen to anybody, any advices and do Kapalabhati for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, 1 hour, 100 times, 500 times, 1000 times, no. A big no. Every excess of everything is bad in yoga. Right? Yoga derives a lot of itself from balance. It's an equanimous mind, a balanced mind. Right? It talks about Samatvam Yoga Chaiti. Samatvam means balance. Your mind needs to be balanced. So everything is in moderation and balance as far as yoga is concerned. Doing excess of yoga, you perform yoga for four hours, it will give you more benefit? No. It will harm you. Right? So Kapalvati in high numbers is not going to help you, especially patients who have high blood pressure and patients who have any neck problem, backache problem should not perform it. Blood pressure patients, if your blood pressure is normal while you are getting it checked, then you can perform it. But for other people, people with high blood pressure, it will shoot up your blood pressure. It will have a negative effect on your blood pressure on your heart. So Kapalvati is not for everybody. Here in this module on day 1 and day 2, we are only doing Kapalbhati for 5 times, gradually moving to 10 times, then 15 times and finally moving it to 20 times. Not more than 20 times is not required right now. Alright, so let's begin. The basic thing about Kapalbhati is forceful exhalation. We do not focus on inhalation. Inhalation is by default. The exhalation part is to be more impactful, more powerful, more strong. Please have a look at this. First inhale. That makes 20 rounds of Kapalbhati. Remember Kapalbhati is not for everybody. People with high blood pressure, heart problem, open heart surgeries, angioplasty, neck pain, backache, please do not do it. There are several other asanas, pranayams and kriyas, several other breathing techniques which will give you the same amount of benefit, which will give you the same amount of strength. Kapalbhati is not the only breathing exercise in yoga. We say as many yonias are there, as many creatures are there, that many number of yoga asanas are there. So you can imagine this, huge knowledge. So Kapalbhati, please practice on your own now, hands will be in Gyan Mudra. You will sit comfortably cross-legged or Ardha Padmasana, which is half Padmasana or in full Padmasana or you can sit on a chair and do it. Inhale, forceful exhalation. That's it, about 20 times of Kapalabhati. Now after Kapalabhati, I'm assuming those who are live and joined with us, they have performed Kapalabhati. You can leave your comments, suggestions below if you have any of them. If you want me to speed up, if you want me to slow. If you want a little bit more voice clarity, if you have an external speaker, you can add your device to that. The voice clarity will even become a little more louder. So now we'll do Parvatasana. Parvat is mountain. So taken from the mountain, Parvatasana strengthens your entire back enhances the oxygenation of your mind. The reach of the oxygenation from your body to your brain increases by uh, mountain posture, Parvatasana, hands by your side. You can again sit in Padmasana with both the legs on the top. You can sit in Ardha Padmasana with one leg on the top. All right? Or you can sit in Sukhasana, which is crossed legs. Or you can sit on a chair, hands by your side. Inhale and go up. Join both your palms, stretch up a little bit, stretch up. Exhale and down. I'll perform once again. So you will inhale and go up. Join the palms, stretch up, hold the posture. One, two, three, four, five. Open your palms, exhale and down. Right? Parvatasana. The little stretch up gives a nice pull a gentle pull to your spinal cord and enhances the oxygenation reach to all the nerves ending to all the parts of your brain all right now after parvatasana you're going to do singhasana as i said yesterday singhasana is taken from a 
lion. Singh is a lion, right? So Singhasan is derived from a lion. When the old age Rishi Munis were sitting in the forest and they were observing the animals in preacher, well, most of the yoga, yoga has been taken from the Prakriti. Prakriti is the nature. So they were observing different plants, different natures, they were observing different animals and they said, well, this animal is very strong, what does it do? Like we did the Sarpasan and Nagasan, that is taken, Sarp is a snake, Nag is a Nag, which is also a, a, a form of a snake. So when the Rishis were straying, they said, well, this, this animal crawls on the forest, on the, on the mud, but how come it has a, such a strong spinal cord? It has got a very strong spinal cord. And then it realized it does something with the spinal cord, it works on its spinal cords, it, it has such a posture, it develops such a posture that it works on its spinal cord. And that's where we derived Sarpasan and Nagasan from. Now you're going to do Singhasan. Singh is lion. For Singhasan, we'll sit on Vajrasan, that's on our knees. Anybody who's got knee replacement, knee problems, please do not do Singhasan. Right? Or you can sit on a chair and do Singhasan. If you can't sit on your knees, right, um, due to any weight problems or any knee pains or knee replacement, you can also do Singhasan sitting like this in Sukhasan or normal crossed posture, what we say in common language. But for those of you who can get into Vajrasan, please get into Vajrasan. To sit in Vajrasan, you have to sit on both your knees like this, but not like, legs will not be like this, I'll show you. Both the toes will be on top of each other, you'll make a seat out of it and you'll sit on it. So if you can see, both the thumbs, the toes are on top of each other, we have made a seat and we sat down on it, hands will be like this. Right, if I may, toes will be together and you'll sit down on it. You don't have to sit like this. This is not Vajrasan, this is wrong. So now, please sit in Vajrasan. Hands will be on your thighs. Those who are sitting, uh, or those of you who are doing it on chair, or you're sitting cross legs, sitting in Sukhasan, your hands will be in Gyan Mudra. For the others who are in Vajrasan, hands will be here. Anybody who has got not neck problem will not look down, will look in the front. So for you to do Singhasan, have you ever seen a sing, uh, a lion breathing? You would have, right? In a movie, in a jungle, in a sanctuary. It takes the tongues out and it breathes from its mouth, like it's gasping very heavily. <sighs> right, waiting for the prey, waiting for the strength, waiting for the, for, for the flight, waiting for the run. That's how a sing is, right? So hands will be here together. You take your tongue out. You'll put your chin down. Look between both your eyebrows at the Agya Chakra. <sighs> Just five times. Don't overdo it. Five times is good. Gradually you can increase to eight and ten. Remember, Singhasan is very important in these times to build your immunity. All the bacteria and the viruses, they grow in this part of your body first. The incubation period. And then they enter inside your body. The Singhasan cleanses your entire throat region. It helps to cleanse the nasal cavity and the mouth. So please perform Singhasan with me. Sit in Vajrasana, you'll fold one leg, you fold the other legs. As I told you, the toes will be on top of each other, hands will be on this, relax your shoulders. Anybody who has got a cervical problem, you have a neck pain, acute neck pain or cervical problem, you look in front and perform Singhasan, but you look it between your eyebrows. For a normal person who does not have a neck problem, perform the same thing, look between both your eyebrows, put the chin down, look in between. <sighs> Please do it for five times. You can gradually increase it to eight and ten. Now after performing Singhasan, I assume you would have performed Singhasan. Again, please get into Sukhasan. Those who are sitting on chair or doing on bed, you can sit crossed leg. If you can do, you can sit in half Padmasana. If you can, you can sit in full Padmasana, according to your capacity. But please do not force yourself. Do not exert unnecessary pressure 
on your legs to get into Padmasana. It's only as per your capacity. We are going to do Shankhana. Do you know what is a Shankha? This is the Shankha. Shankha is a conch shell. It makes sound. Right? So Shankhana is excellent for your pulmonary system. Like we did the Vakshas Thal in the beginning. And you can also see in the module which I have shared. The list of exercises in, in Hindi and English are shared with you in the comments. In the yesterday's video and on the page. Please have a look at it. You can keep it in front of you while I teach. It will help you to coordinate virtually. So Shankarna, we work on the lungs and we strengthen the pulmonary system. Close both your palms. Thumbs will be inside. Make a fist. One on top of another. Right? Those who have joined us just now, welcome. The thumb is in between. You close the fist and put one on top of each other. Excellent exercise to increase your pulmonary strength and your respiratory strength. Both together. First inhale. Put your hands on your mouth and exhale. Pump it inside this blow like you're blowing air. Just like you, how you blow air in a conch shell, right? Just how you blow your air in a shank to create sound. Similarly, you have to blow the air in your hands, right? But no, you don't have to do no. It's a very gentle pressure, gentle exertion, and excellent for your lungs because your lungs are filled with air. And similarly, there's a pressure and anti-pressure happening. You're trying to exert pressure from within your body and from externally as well. Okay. So on top of each other, blow it into it, inhale, fill your lungs, fill your entire body with air, put this on your mouth and blow. Please try to practice it at home just now. Once you have filled the air in your lungs, you have filled the air in your cheeks, start blowing air into the conch which you have made with both your fists. Another alternative to this is if you are unable to practice Shankhana and the alternative is that people who, uh, you can get a packet of balloon and blow one balloon daily and gift it to some little baby who will enjoy it or burst the balloon and have fun. But blowing one balloon at least daily will enhance your pulmonary system and will strengthen your lungs and increase the capacity of the lungs. Like even if somebody has a conch shell, you can make it as a routine to blow the conch shell. That is the real version of doing the Shankhanar. Shankhanar is an exercise in yoga as we did. But blowing a shank is still more practical and, and Shankhanar is derived from shank. Looking at a shank. So I'll blow the conch now, this conch shell. also you can blow the corn shell thrice five times I think five times is more than sufficient to one at one go you don't want to exert any negative pressure on your lungs now after Shankhanath I taught you a pranayam yesterday that is Nadi Shodhan Pranayam I'll request everybody to keep on joining the classes on a regular basis so then you learn more what you've learned yesterday we add to the knowledge today and we move ahead Today we have learned three new exercises apart from the module that we did yesterday. Now I'm going to teach you a pranayam. We all know that pranayam is very important. Prana is your breath, is the air. This is prana. And ayam is regulating it, controlling it, expanding it, making it reach to every different part of your body through pranayam. So pranayam is very important. Nari Shodhan pranayam, you can do it like this. If anybody has got any problem, you can sit in cross leg with both your hands in Gyan Mudra. I told you for hands to be in Gyan Mudra, the first finger and the thumb will join each other. No force, no pressure, no cross, just the tips will join and you'll place it on your knees. For the others, please sit down on Vajrasan. I taught you for Vajrasan, both the toes behind should be on top of each other. We make a seat and we sit down on it. This is not Vajrasana. You have to put both the toes on top of each other and sit down on that. That is Vajrasana. Alright? So what is commonly known as Anulom Vilom Pranayam, uh, 
most commonly and what everybody knows is anulom vilom pranayam so the minute we say let's practice anulom vilom pranayam everybody starts doing alternate nostril breathing yes that is true but in our center this is our own personalized and a varied version with the knowledge of our guru uh, over the last 60 years of research we have modified uh, the entire uh, anulom vilom pranayam and made nadi shodhan pranayam out of that so nadi shodhan pranayam is a modified original version created by our institute our 60 year old institute which includes anulom vilom nadi is all the nerves so right from your nostril to your entire body there are a lot of nerve nerve endings so nadi shodhan shodhan is cleansing so you have to cleanse each and every nerve which is there in your body right so the first step of nadi shodhan those who are sitting cross leg hands will be in yan mudra those who are sitting in vajrasan hands will be on your thighs first step look in the front breathe uh, inhale and exhale three times step number 2 right hand right thumb close your right nostril left will be open we'll inhale and exhale thrice from the left nostril step number 3 use both the central fingers central fingers to close your left nostril now inhale and exhale from the right side three times close your right nostril with the thumb now we will start the fourth step which is anulom vilom alternate nostril breathing inhale from the left exhale from the right inhale from the right exhale from the left inhale from the left exhale from the right this is alternate nostril breathing so this is the entire module of nadi shodhan first aap apni nadiyon ko shuddha to kariye apni nerve endings ko shuddha to kariye then do anulom vilom Nadi Shodhan Pranayam is not just jumping into Anulom Vilom directly. There's a step we need to towards it. There are four steps that we have learned, and this modification of Anulom Vilom Pranayam as a Nadi Shodhan Pranayam is 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 presented by our institute. We have modified it so that you cleanse your nerve endings, nerves first. First, you do the Nadi Shodhan, and then you do Anulom Vilom, and don't mix both of them. All right. So now I'll repeat the version. Please, this time, practice with me. Remember one ground rule if you are inhaling thrice in the front thrice from the left nostril thrice from the right nostril then your alternate nostril breathing and lom vilom will be six times double the number so thrice 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 then the anulom vilom will be six times similarly as you graduate and move further you might want to do it for five times so if you inhale and exhale five times in the front five from the left five from the right then the anulom vilom will be 10 times and the anulom vilom always starts from the left hand side right we end on the right but then we close the right nostril and start from the left hand side i'll perform it again in the front look inhale and exhale three times please practice it with me right now this time three rounds now close with your right hand right thumb close your right nostril inhale and exhale three times from your left nostril now use both the middle two fingers to close your left nostril now inhale and exhale three times from your right nostril now the fourth step in the anulom vilom close your right nostril open your left nostril now we'll start from the left and exhale from the right inhale from the right exhale from the left alternate nostril breathing anulom vilom six times so if you do it thrice in the front thrice from the left nostril thrice from the right nostril then the anulom vilom or the alternate nostril breathing will be done six times now after nadi shodhan pranayam we'll do one of the most critical asan and that's the last asan for the today those who have joined us late i'll request you all to join on 8 at 8 am tomorrow so that you can follow the entire series 
that asan that we are going to do the last asan for today is shav asan shav is a dead body you see how a dead body is very calm very peaceful no worries ultimate bliss peace and happiness so similarly this is derived from a shav from a corpse so shav asana we lie down it's a very favorite asan everybody likes it and perhaps due to this uh, pandemic and this public health crisis right now when all of us are under lockdown at our respective uh, places uh, all that we do in the majority of the day is shavasana we are lying down sleeping right it is said that if you don't do shavasana the entire practice of yoga is a waste you do not get the ultimate benefits of it first let's do shavasana then i'll talk more about it it looks very insignificant but it's very integral please lie down on your back there will be a gap of 1 minute and a half foot between both your legs palms will be facing upwards towards the sky open them up open them up towards the sky lie down relax your entire body like a dead body you can loose leave your legs loose loose leave your hands loose leave each and every part of your body loose focus on your breathing travel with your breathing and inhale and exhale inhale and exhale 10 times you can form in both your hands rub both the palms there will be some heat generated place it on your eyes again rub both the palms generate some heat place it on your eyes third time and the final time right so the last asan that we did is shavasan it looks very insignificant very simple we hear comments like my favorite asana is shavasana because i can sleep in it but it is very integral when people come to our yoga ashram we tell them that you might perform yoga for one hour but if you don't do shavasana in the end then your your entire labor entire hard work for one hour is a waste because all the energies need to reach back to their places all the oxygen which you have taken should reach to every organ and every part of your body and how will that happen when you put your body back in a relaxed position after doing all the exercises your body is back in a relaxed posture that is when you st- help your body to recuperate you help your body to recover you help your body to take all the energies and all the oxygen to different part of your body all right so thank you so much this is the module for today uh, you can find the yoga program both in hindi script and in english script on the comment section i'll post it even in today's video i posted it on the page and on the yesterday's video we do not need to worry in these times of crisis lockdown can have a lot of mental health uh, issues with a lot of people who do not like isolation who do not like to be locked down who do not like they can feel anxious and anxiety who do not like to be within the four walls of a house that's tomorrow is a day after session tomorrow is friday friday and saturday session we are going to focus on mental health yesterday wednesday and today thursday we focused on how to boost your immunity and strengthen your immunity in these times of crisis where a virus can attack your body right tomorrow and day after we are going to focus on mental health what are different mudras asan yoga kriyas that can help you to strengthen your mind so you do everything for our body we we take bath we get ready we wear good clothes we put on makeup everything but we hardly do anything for our mind we also need to do a lot for our mind mind is governing the body you see so mind also needs to be strengthened so anybody who you know who you think needs help while at home or is feeling very frustrated anxious anxiety that person can join us tomorrow and day after in the mental health class and the yoga and mudras and pranayams and kriyas all that we do tomorrow will only focus on mental health so next two days i'll focus on mental health if we continue the class for the next week 
then thrice a week monday tuesday wednesday i will teach you yoga which focuses on immunity boosting and strengthening your immunity building it and growing your immunity and every last two days of the week every thursdays and fridays we will work on mental health Saturday Sunday is a holiday for you all you can enjoy that Monday to Friday we'll have classes from the next week if everybody wants them I'll reschedule them and share my yoga time with you all I perform yoga at my home and I'm sharing that time with you and I love doing that um, but for this week since we started classes yesterday we are stretching the classes up to Saturday two days we have worked on immunity today was our day two day three and day four we'll work on our mental health and we'll continue it as and when it's required, right? You can leave your comments, suggestions, you can uh, drop an email, the email IDs are mentioned if you want to discuss anything. If you have any particular to ask, any suggestions, comments, or you just, you just want to share your experience with us, please do that and join us live at 8 a.m. tomorrow. I will be again willingly waiting to share my yoga time with you all and spread it to as many people who need it, who benefit, who can benefit from it. And uh, there's no need to panic. We need to have a very calm and stable approach towards it. Yes, there's a crisis. We can't do anything about it. There's no point taking stress about it. All the protective, preventive and precaution measures which we can take, we are taking. We are taking. A lot of the things are yet to be done. We are still working on it. The government is working on it. But as far as we are concerned, while we perform yoga, strengthen our immunity, boost up your immunity, expand your pulmonary and respiratory system, we are adding another layer of protection, another layer of immunity. Because at this point of time, if anybody has got even normal cold, cough, bronchitis, asthma, such a person goes into the higher risk zone. You are more prone to being attacked with any kind of external object. So if you strengthen your immunity, if you keep your cold, cough, sneezing, everything in control at this point of time, then you have a strong body. At the end of the yoga session today, I request you all to again have a glass of lukewarm water. We have a glass of lukewarm water at the start of the yoga session and now we have a lukewarm water at the end of the yoga session. Thank you so much. God bless you. Stay safe. Be home and enjoy your day. See you tomorrow.